this is more broader. So healthcare an analytics, getting a lot of a uh, lot of conversations around this, and you know, because it, it it can veer off at this point, at this juncture in our history, it can veer off in a lot of different directions. It's still predictive versus uh, you know retrospective and those kind of things. But predictive is getting more interesting, and you're looking at machine learning, you're looking at AI and some other things. Um, so this might be another question that you answer with governance, but how have you structured your healthcare analytics practice um, to optimize it for success and, and the, the changes that are likely to come here in the near future? Right. Well, of course, as you point out, it's all requirements driven which is in order to be successful running an ACO, you need a set of benchmarking reports that are retrospective, that are looking at quality and cost and variation across different providers. However, what's, the trend is moving away from business intelligence and to machine learning. And as you suggest, I am going to take a patient today and based on machine learning techniques of 2 million patients before them, suggest what their right course of treatment should be and start to schedule the interventions I'm going to make. You have to pick your use cases a little carefully there, right? This is not replacing doctors with machine learning. That's not it. But it's saying, aha, you need a surgery today. I actually look at 2 million patients like you, and here's who should do it, how it should be done, and how long it will take. And that's the kind of interesting, not so much business intelligence, because it's more complicated than that. I have to look at your age and your ethnicity and your comorbidities and model it in a predictive way using a machine learning approach. We've got about a dozen projects that our governance groups have suggested are appropriate use cases for that approach. So your analytics, your analytics projects are really bubbling up from all over the organization from a lot of different governance groups. There isn't a analytics group per se? Well, so in a $5.5 billion organization, you can imagine that you have a lot of stakeholders. So sometimes the stakeholders are the accountable care organization. That's one set of analytics. Sometimes it's the quality folks. Sometimes it's the compliance folks. So sure, all this ultimately bubbles into governance. But I believe in a you know, very federated approach, which is that I'll delegate to the ACO what analytics they need. I mean, I can't decide on their behalf. And hopefully I've built this generic infrastructure of normalized data that is accessible via a variety of tools and new machine learning capabilities that address these various stakeholder needs. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. And I, I, I think, you probably know this, but there's so many different models out there around uh, analytics and how it bubbles up and how it's governed and where data governance resides. And uh, it's it's really it's one of those areas that's fascinating to me. And I, I I'm going to keep diving into it on this show and and see if I can't unearth the different models that are out there.